Hey everybody, what is going on today? Buddy Blackford here with another Photoshop CS6 tutorial. Today we're going to learn about using the shadows and highlight adjustment. And what the shadows and highlights adjustment lets you do is quickly correct the problems associated with underexposed and overexposed areas of the image, such as um, shadows and highlights, obviously. So if you have really, really deep shadows or really bright highlights, you can mess with the, or mess with the shadows and highlights adjustment to help you out there and make it look nice. And what's good about it is that you can adjust the shadows and the highlights without changing the midtones in the image. So that'll help you out. Um, and one thing you need to know about the uh, shadows and highlights adjustment is that it does not work in uh, CMYK color mode. So make sure in RGB. All right, so one thing I learned when I've been um, using the shadow and highlights um, is that um, to make it a non-destructive adjustment, we want to apply it to a smart object. So we're going to convert our background to a smart object. And what destructive means is that it's not, or when you apply an adjustment right to the background or uh, to a layer, um, without like having like an adjustment layer or something, it um, pretty much gets embedded into that uh, picture or that photos like pixels and everything like that and then you can't go back and change it so you use the layers so you can go back and adjust things and move them back and forth alright so let's convert this into a smart object so just right click on it in the layers panel over here convert to smart object we're gonna go to image adjustments and then shadows and highlights and you can see this has already been brightened up by the uh, defaults so um, when you start out it's going to look like this probably there is a button here called show more options we're gonna click on that and that will give us some more options here now we've got the amount which is pretty much the volume so if I go to the right it's gonna be brightened up a lot if I go to the left this is gonna be have more shadows so this is the shadow section going uh, adding more amount gives you less shadow going to the left gives you more shadow. Now we got the tonal width here and this um, pretty much asks you what is a shadow so if you move it to the left you're going to get more things that are shadows and if you move it to the right you're gonna get more that are um, not shadows. So move that to some place where it looks pretty decent for you and then we got the radius here and that's how far out um, the shadows are gonna like go so what you want to look for when you're moving the radius around is good smooth blending in between your uh, shadows and the midtones and everything else. So you want to make sure it looks nice when it blends in with each other. And uh, that looks good to me. 80 seems pretty good. And um, let me check the preview. So this was a lot darker before and now we have brightened it up. Now, same thing with the highlights, and you can see there's no uh, midtone going on here, so we are saving out our midtones just like I explained before. So if I go to the right here, it's going to give us less highlight. And you can see mainly um, in this light blue area is where a lot of it's a lot of the change is happening. So I like to have this uh, color pop a bit, so I'm going to keep the uh, highlights pretty up uh, pretty high. And then let's check out the tonal width here. So which way we want to go. So there's no like magic numbers for this. You need to uh, adjust the slider manually every time so that your picture or your image looks good. So we have to pr pretty much go through this and manually do some uh, trial and error and everything like that and see what looks good. So this isn't doing much, so I'm not too worried about it. So I'm just going to keep it down, probably because of the amount is low. Now we've got our color correction adjustments here in midtone contrast and uh, you can move those sliders to decrease or increase the color saturation values of the uh, areas of the image that were adjusted. So if I start moving this around, you can see uh, how it's getting more saturated. You move it to the left. If I move it all the way, way to the left, it's not as saturated. Let's see what this looks like compared to the other one. It should be kind of saturated the walls out a little. Let's see what else we got. This is all the way. 
you can see how the walls are. I got a lot more color in them and everything like that. So that's just uh, what's going on there. I, I think I'm going to keep it up somewhat high, probably around 30. And then let's move the midtone contrast here. So we really like. So when I move to the left, um, you can see that if you take a look in this area right here where this orange is, you can see it's all like blurred and blended in. If I move this to the right, it's going to be a little bit more sharp, not so blended in and everything like that. It has some nice contrast. So I'm just clicking on the preview to uh, go back and forth to check my image every once in a while to uh, see how progress is going on it. All right. Oh, we've got our uh, black and white clip here. Um, you can enter values from 0 to 50 percent um, in the boxes there to indicate how much shadow and highlight values um, are going to be clipped in your image. So the greater values that you put in, it's going to pu uh, put in more contrast. So if I put in like 25 percent here or something like that, you can see what happened. I go to 50 and obviously 50 is way too much because we're getting some breakage here and all that stuff and artifacting that we don't want. So just move that to whatever you whatever you think is nice. We got our white clip. I'll bring that to like 25 so you can see what's going on there. You can see this is getting blasted out, so we don't want that much. We want this probably be as low as we can. 0.01, probably good. If I can do that. Let's put that at zero. There we go. So that's what I'm uh, looking for in my image. Um, this is what it is now. I'm going to hit OK. And you notice that when I hit OK, we've got um, some new stuff going on over here. We've got a smart filter, um, which is a filter on a on a, a smart object. And in all honesty, it's not really a filter. The filters are found in this uh, filter section here. But um, we added an adjustment, and that's just how... Um, Photoshop handles it when you add some of these adjustments to a smart object and you can see that shadows highlights HDR toning and variations are the ones that you can do this with so um, most of the other ones because you can't find you can't find uh, black and white up here in any of these uh, filters or any of these adjustment layers that we've been going over so I just went through all of them and black and white's not on there. So this is the way that you would want to add the black and white adjustment. I remember converting to a smart object, um, then adding the black and white adjustment, and then, or it's shadows and highlights, my bad. I kept on saying black and white meant shadows and highlights, and um, adding it as a smart filter. So um, that's all I wanted to show you how, uh, show you guys. And uh, thank you for watching, and you now know how to use the shadows and highlights adjustment. So have a good one, everyone.